Hi, this is Ned Blackwood, snowboardaddiction.com. You're checking out the Backside 360 video lesson. Before you get into this trick, you're going to need to have front ones, cab ones, and back ones down. They're essential building blocks for the back three. If you can't yet do these tricks, read, watch, and listen to the corresponding parts of the program first. You'll be surprised how easy they become when you understand the correct technique. Take note, I'm a regular rider. If you're a goofy footed rider, do everything in this video in the opposite direction. A backside 360, or any backside spin, is where the back of your body will be facing downhill during the first 180 of the spin. The first thing you need to feel is how the body rotates at 360. And the best way to do this is jumping on flat ground with the ball off. Wind up, jump off both feet, and simultaneously release the body's momentum into the backside direction. You can do this anywhere, from the beach to the bedroom. However, I find it most useful right in front of the jump you wish to hit. This makes it easy to visualize your trick as if you have your board on. Notice how you're not only spinning with your arms and shoulders, but also your core, hips, knees and feet. It's really a full body movement that helps you spin smoothly. Keep your head looking in the natural direction of travel and try to trick your mind that you're already doing it. Pay attention to where you'll be spotting the landing. For a back three, the landing will come into view after rotating 270 degrees through the air. The more you do, the better it will become into view, and the better they'll begin to feel. Strap your board on, and try using your toe edge to pop from instead of a flat face. It's considerably harder with the board on, however it provides good practice for controlling your balance. It's okay if you can only do a 180 with your board strapped on. The key here is to visualize yourself as if you're already spinning off the jump and you own this trick. There are four key aspects to spinning any rotation. In this video, we're going to apply them specifically to backside 360s. The first key aspect is to set that edge and create a strong platform to spin from. By a platform, I mean use your toe or your heel edge to create a reference to spin. For spinning backside, it's far easier to use your toe edge. To have a strong platform, you need to first know how to carve, which is riding only on your edge. The better you can carve, the stronger platform you'll have to spin from. Before you master back threes on straight jumps, do a bunch of little side hits such as this one. You can go as big or as small as you want, and there are absolutely no consequences if you slam. The best part about this little side hit is you don't need to think about creating a platform to spin from because you're already on your toe edge to hit the jump. When it comes to back three and straight jumps, your line of entry becomes very important. Do a few straight ears first to get the speed dialed, then use the same speed when spinning the three. We need to leave the lip of the jump straight so that we travel in a straight direction while in the air. However, as we're carving up the wedge of the jump on our toes, our board will already be turning in the backside direction, so we need to start a toe edge carve from the right hand side of the jump. There's a point I like to call the setup point, which is the position of flat ground between the downhill runner and the uphill wedge of the jump. As we pass through the setup point, we should be slightly to the right hand side of the jump so that we can carve up the lip to leave in a straight direction. The second key aspect is winding up. You wind up in the opposite direction you wish to spin, so that as you pop off the lip, you can release that momentum into the desired direction. The wind up begins just as you pass through the setup point and uses the arms, shoulders, hips and knees. The amount you need to wind up depends on the size of the jump and the amount you want to spin. If 
360 is not a huge spin, so you don't need to huck like a ballerina. A small jump requires more wind up than a bigger one. A common mistake is to wind up too early. Try to avoid winding up earlier than the setup point. The third key aspect is releasing off the lip. Release of the wind up happens just at the last moment as you pop off the lip. Try to always leave the lip with a jump with your board in a straight direction. Just as you reach the desired amount of wind up, release it into the spin so that there's no delay point where you're holding that wound up position. If you begin to wind up too early, it's a common reaction to release too early. Using your knees and ankles to flex down while traveling through the setup point will force you to pop off the lip. More pop will help you to spin bigger, better and cleaner, resulting in solid pop. The final key is spotting the landing, which is relatively easy for a back three. As you come around 270 degrees, the landing will begin to come into view. You'll have full view of the landing for the last 90 degrees. Get ready to stomp and absorb with the knees and ankles. Right away like it ain't a thing. Once you have them down, you can take the same technique to all sizes of jumps. And when you've got back threes on lock, you can combine a back one on the end and you have a back five. It's the next step up. This is Neil Blackwood, snowboardaddiction.com. Have fun. Visit www.snowboardaddiction.com to check out more.